All right, what I want to accomplish today, I have this Daystar switch assembly here, and I'm going to pull this out and access the wiring behind it. Now I have all of these switches pre-wired, even two of them that are not in use, which are these two right here. Basically, I have them all pre-wired to relays under the hood. My plan is to remove a switch. I've got a brand new one coming with a lockable cover right here. So you can't uh, accidentally bump into this thing. You have to slide an orange toggle down, then you can close the switch. So that's on its way. So right here will be my locker enable switch. And that'll still leave me an extra switch here that's tied into a relay. So I know I have 12 volts positive in here that's fused. I wanna tap off of that run that wire up over to the other side of the steering column for my LED light. That thing needs power. And then as you recall, the ground, the other wire on the LED light will be in series with this enable switch. So when the enable switch goes on, just like you see that light come on, um, when the, even when this gets changed out, the LED light for the locker enable switch over on the left side of the steering column will come on. And that also will uh, allow either of the two new locker bypass switches to work. So, so what does that mean? Well, I know I need a feed wire brought over to that side of the Jeep. And I need two conductors that will be for ground. One into the switch and one back out and up. So a total of three individual conductors from this location over to the other side of the steering column for the new switch assembly. Okay. You can see here I got a red positive, two negatives. One of them I actually marked uh, with a ground. You'll see that just so I can differentiate which, which one is which. In order to get more room, I got the vehicle in four low, so I was able to pull the shifter all the way back. And you can see that I have the transmission in neutral. I have the wheels chalk so, so it doesn't go rolling anywhere. And I have these little plastic pieces. I, I bought these a while ago. These are terrific. They're made out of plastic. They're great for taking pieces of uh, trim off. You can see what I have. So it's been a long time since I've had this, this piece out. So I'm just gonna use one of these plastic pieces and, and get a corner open and then pull this out and access the uh, switches, access the connection, uh, all the connections behind the individual switches. All right, you can see that the bottom goes into a couple grooves. See how that's set up? And then the top has these pins right here that, that push in. One of, them, one of them goes right there where I'm pointing, and the other one goes right here. So you can see I, I now have access to the switches. So what I wanna do is disconnect the third switch in uh, from the left, and I'm actually gonna take that switch out. But I definitely wanna disconnect the, uh, you can see the grounds are are looped around because these are illuminated switches. And then I wanna get into the feed and get the uh, feeds disconnected and tap into that and bring it over to the other side. Okay, I very simply just disconnected the three wires. Obviously there was a feed, there was a, a ground for the illuminated portion of the switch and then there was what we call a switch leg or a load that went to a relay underneath the hood. So you can see that the third switch over has been removed. That's where my new switch, this is where my locker enable switch, the safety switch that I've been talking about is gonna go in this slot right here. Okay, so the grounds have been disconnected. We have a feed. So what I wanna do is I wanna get my three wires run up top uh, from this location underneath the dash. We'll, t we'll, we'll tie wrap all the wires out of the way and bring them over to the opening on the other side of the steering column that you can't really see right now. So that's what's going on. All right, I wanna make mention, these are Carling Technology switches. Uh, Mike, Mike T noticed this, which was really good because he was aware that this switch made a lockable cover. I could have kept this switch in position and just put the cover on, but uh, for $12, I ordered a whole new switch with the locking cover on it. So that should be coming this week. And you can see that it's a 20 amp rated switch at 12 volts. So that's inbound. This will just set aside for a spare switch. This was an illuminated switch. 
that's why you have the third uh, prong right there because you got to ground the LED light and then there's internal circuitry that actually goes to the LED so we're going to change this whole switch out but it was a really good switch I've had it in there for a long time and then I used this one and another one I had pre I had relays pre-wired underneath the hood for future uh, future accessories that I might that I might utilize so this is just a great clean way of utilizing what I have you can see the switch switches right there so I'll get the three wires run over that I'm going to use the ground in and out as well as the 12 volt feed for the LED uh, for the enable LED light on the new uh, locker bypass assembly all right looking at it from the driver's side so I just have this open like that. I turn the key off. So basically, from under here, I gotta come around into the, uh, into the footwell and tie wrap nicely these three conductors right here. Those will come around where, where the other cable went through the firewall, and then it'll come up in, inside of here and then get to this location. So basically right now, let's just get the wires pulled from this location to tie into the rocker switches in the LED to the new location over here once I get the new switch. Okay, that went pretty good. So I got my three wires right here run. I got the feed for the LED light. I got my two, uh, my, my, ground, my ground conductors. Basically, these are the conductors that go in series with the enable switch and then ultimately end up being grounded. I see a nice metal uh, bolt right here i think that's going to be my grounding terminal i'll i'll disconnect that bolt i'll clean it up with some sandpaper so i got a nice good ground and definitively that'll be my ground point right here uh, and then obviously this is my two conductor cable from each locker relay underneath the hood uh, it's coming along it's coming along pretty good and then when you look over here here's the three wires right here coming up into the switch area so, so these three conductors come around way up behind the pedals. They're tie wrapped, very good. I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you it's easy. It's actually very, very difficult to get back there and tie that stuff up. But you want that out of the way really good so that it doesn't interfere with the pedals at all. So, so that's pretty good. So another good step in the right direction. Okay, my grounding conductor is folded over so it fits in there nice. I got a good solid crimp on it. And then this bolt went right in here. It's all nice metal. I'm gonna take a little emery cloth and even sand that up and even make it better. And then this will go through there and ground this system. So I'm taking care of that first. All right, taking a piece of emery cloth. I was able to sand that up really nice. Look at that, we're gonna have a great ground connection right there. So the next thing will be to tighten this uh, ring tongue terminal in there with that bolt. Okay, I have an extremely tight, good ground connection right there. So basically that would be this on the diagram. So the other side of this is gonna to go to the load side of the safety switch. And then the first, the other ground wire that I have will be paralleled off the two locker switches. It'll also pick up the ground from the LED light and then make its way to the line side of the safety switch. So. Coming along pretty good. I might just uh, button this up and take care of tying all of this switch stuff in right here. You can see I have, I have the uh, locker bypass switch assembly all set. I have my two conductors right here for the LED light. The one with the white stripe, which is right there to my right. Uh, that one right there is the positive. And these LED lights, you need to be conscious of polarity. Positive needs, needs to be positive, negative needs to be negative. All right, my cable that goes through the firewall to the locker relays, two conductor cable. I'm gonna use the red conductor for the front, the black conductor for the rear. So this is all stripped. So this too now can make its way into the switch area. So I've got, I've got the, the two wires for the relays I've got the feed for the LED lights, and then I've got the ground that comes uh, back. This is the ground that actually goes to the enable switch. So this one's gonna pick up the load sides of both switches, as well as the black wire, the ground wire on the LED lights. So it's coming along pretty nice.
All right, you can see that the load wires are done. I've got them hooked up, but I'm, I'm gonna ridicule this kit. Now I had to use some of my own female spade connectors to get on there that actually fit tight. The kit comes with these spade connectors right here. Can you see these female spades? They're so loosey goosey, they don't even fit tight on those male spades coming out of the back of the switch. So I gotta, I gotta bang this kit on that. That's piss poor that they can't give you the right size terminals for the spades that come out of the back of the switch. So that could be really problematic for someone to have loose connections and have them popping off. Okay, what I've done is I've used the, I've used the butt splice right here for the feed. This is a fused uh, plus 12 volts that hits the LED lights. And then because of their terminal, their terminals that they give you not fitting the switches properly, I had to redo them with terminals that I had. And the last thing I need to plug in is the actual locker plug right there. Then I can insert this switch in. So the, the uh, red wire, see it right there, that red wire that goes out to the locker relay, that's going to go to the front relay and the black ones go into the rear the uh, switch on the right. So the first switch would be the front locker. The next switch would be the rear locker. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll rethink that. I guess I can decide. I mean, maybe it's prudent to have the rear locker first, then the front locker. So if that's the case, the red wire right there will go to the rear locker relay and the black wire would go to the front locker relay. So there we go, everything just barely fits, tight fit. Okay, so the switch assembly is all wired up. You can see this went back in there nicely. We're grounded. The locker plug is, is pushed back in right there. Had to uh, very carefully put those wires back in. Uh, pretty disgusted with the kit in regards to the shitty quality of the of the female spade connectors they gave you. These things are so loose, they don't even fit the spades behind the switches right. So anyway, you can get around it with, with a uh, different, smaller female spade connector. So, so that's pretty good. I can put this panel in here now and cover that back up. Nice. Good clean look, everything's closed up nice. So now I can bring the wires. I'll probably put this assembly back together. I'll feed the, uh, the 12 volts to the LED lights and then I'm just waiting on the switch to go in there. I'll bring the wires through here so they can be tied in and then the switch, the switch could be pushed in. So I think I can do some more prep work. And then when this is all wired up and the new locking switch comes in, then it's just a question of testing it out and hopefully this is a a good successful uh, modification and I still have the two wires I got to strip the cable underneath the hood and tie in the two wires to the relays so I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking about stopping for today been at it for a while okay my feed wire for the LED is hooked up I basically just paralleled it and then here's my uh, my two my two wires for the grounding switch basically for the safety switch very pleased with that. It's coming on nice. So I'll just leave these like that. That way I can hook them up. I can put uh, female spades on it, hook it up to the switch. And then when this is all pushed into the dash, I can just slide the switch right in there with the locking cover. Okay, you can see here that this is all set for the new switch. I'll hook one wire up to each side of the normally open switch. And I'll put spade connectors on that, female spades. And then these wires will push right in. The switch will tuck right in and lock into place. I uh, should not have to uh, open this cover up again. So all my wiring is concealed. And uh, now I can just back this Jeep up. So what's left? Do the switch right there. Test everything, obviously. And tie in the two wires uh, into the locker relays. So you can see right over here how that came out. Now at first I thought, well, maybe I'll have... Maybe I'll go front, rear, but I gotta give that some thought. I, I might go rear first, then front. That's up to me to decide how I wanna do that. I know which wire, I got a red wire and a black wire. I know which wire is going to what switch. 
so I can determine what works best for me. It's not a big deal, but you know, when you think about the stock locker, you always put the rear on first. So maybe the first one should be the rear and then the next one will be the front. Even though I can put them on in any order that I want now with this bypass. So a couple little items left and then I can test it all out. All right, I just wanted to take a moment and uh, I have the, the two wires stripped. Now again, these go to a normally open, basically a single pole switch. And what it does is it, it completes the circuit to ground so that the relays, when those switches, when the bypass switches are turned on, I can have my front and rear locker engage at will in four high and even the rear locker in two wheel drive. So what I would expect then with the key on the 12 volts should be going to that LED right there, correct? So if I join these two wires, the LED light should come on. So I'm gonna just take those two wires, twist them together, and then we'll pan over to the LED light and make sure that it's working. Okay, I spliced the two wires together. You can see that the locker override LED is lit. That's terrific. That represents that I'm in locker bypass mode. So now either switch turning on or off would engage the uh, solenoids for, for each locker would then come on as I turn those switches on. So this was just a little test. Obviously the wires aren't hooked up to the relays yet. That'll be done last when I get the switch and then we'll go test this system out on a dirt road. But it's really good to see that closing the circuit, attaching those two wires together on the other side, representing the switch closing, did turn on the LED light. So that's great. That's a great handmade cigar right there, the Macanudo.